Now I, I need your attention for this, okay? So I'm going to explain now in this class how image maps work. Right? And image maps are, oh, that screen got a bit manky, isn't it? Image maps are hotspots you can associate with portions of an image. And if you click on that hotspot, you go to a particular website or a particular URL. So here, for example, I got a mouse. I have no mouse. Okay. Here, if you look on the window there on the left, if you click on that part, you might go to one website. If you click on the top part up there, you might go go somewhere else. So there are areas you can attach to an image. Now there are two kinds of image maps server side and client side. In the early days there was only server side really and nowadays there's only client side really. But it's important for you to, to be aware of the difference. So with server side image maps what happened was the user clicked on the image and then the browser took note of where they clicked so the user clicked on position 72, 104 it sent off the coordinates to the server and there was a program running on the server that said okay if someone clicks on 72, 104, if someone clicks on that position on the image then they have to go to www.cit.ie and so it would send back to the browser the place it had to go That was hard work actually to write the code and stuff for that. You had to have a lot of intelligence in the, in the server. And many hosting companies weren't too keen about you running scripts and things on the servers either. With client-side image maps, all of the information that the browser needs is already there as part of the HTML document. So when a person clicks on an image, position 7204, the browser just looks up where it's supposed to go and then goes off there. So the browser has the information it needs and it has the brains it needs to go in and get the thing itself. Whereas with server side you just sent the coordinates back to a server and the server came back to say where to go. With client side it's all happening in the browser there. As we'll see later in the module, browsers are actually very very smart. They can do an awful lot of work actually. Now, to specify an image map then, you specify different areas. And there are three kinds of areas you can specify in an image map. You can specify a rectangle, you can specify a circle, and you can specify a polygon. To specify a rectangle, you need two points. So in this example here, to specify that green area on the left, the colors on your screen are a bit funny, but that green rectangle there, that point there is 65, 120, and then the bottom right corner is 106, 171. Now how do those numbers work? Well to specify a point, you need two coordinates. So the first one is how many pixels it's over from the left of the image. And the second number is how many pixels down. So it's how many pixels over, how many pixels down. So that point there is 65 pixels over and 120 pixels down. And then the point on the opposite corner is 106 pixels over and 171 pixels down. Now, to specify a rectangle, you need opposite corners. It doesn't matter which ones, actually. But obviously, if you specify the top left corner of that tri rectangle and the bottom left corner of that rectangle, you don't have a rectangle, you just have a line. So they need to be opposite corners. 
So on the HTML then to define that area, we say area space shape equals rect and then coords equals 65, 120, 106, 171. In the href, you put where you would go when you click, and then you also need an alt attribute. And some browsers, when you roll over the hotspot, they'll actually tell you what's in the show you what's in the alt attribute. It doesn't have a closing partner tag, so you have to do slash there to close it off. So for a rectangle, you need two points. To specify a circle, you need two pieces of information. You need three numbers, but two pieces of information. The first thing you need to know is the position of the center of the circle. So that's a point. So here we're saying that the center of this circle is 210 pixels over and 160 pixels down. So it's 210 pixels from the left and 160 pixels from the top. And then the radius is 40 pixels. Now don't confuse the radius with the diameter. So the radius is 40 pixels. So here we're saying area, shape equals circle, coords equals 210, 160, 40. And then href equals whatever in Europe that HTML and then alt equals north, whatever. So that makes sense. For a circle, you need the center and then the radius. To specify a polygon, you have to go point by point by point. So if we look at the top left corner of that polygon there. Unfortunately, it's neither the topmost nor the leftmost, but that one up there, the green one. That's 75 pixels over and 250 pixels down. Then the next point, if we go clockwise, is 150 pixels over and 220 pixels down. The next one is 200 pixels over and 300 pixels down. And the next one is 50, 350. Now, it doesn't matter if you go clockwise or anti-clockwise, but the order is important. If you go, if you do the 75, 250, and then you go down to the 200, 300, and then you go up to the 150, 220, and then down to the 50, 350, you get a sort of a butterfly kind of shape, which wouldn't be the same as this. But it doesn't really matter if you go clockwise or anti-clockwise but the order itself does, does matter. And to specify polygon, you're going to say area, shape equals poly, coords equals point, 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 point. So you have a pair of numbers to represent each point. href equals, in this case, iberia.html, alt equals iberia, and then you have the slash to close it off. No. Those areas then are wrapped up in a map tag. And you must give the map a name. So here I've given it euro dash night as its name. I put it in the header. It can be in the body as well, in fact. I just put it in the header out of the way, but it's perfectly fine in the body also. Then inside in the body, where you have all of your content, you're going to have an image tag that's still a card carrying image tag like all the other image tags you've seen before. So it's IMG, SRC equals whatever, alt equals whatever, width equals whatever, height equals whatever, slash. But in addition, this is saying use map equals hash and the name you gave the image map. So in this case, it's use map equals hash euro nice. No, just one more important point there. Mm. What would happen if, say, the polygon there and the circle overlapped, like in a kind of a Venn diagram or something? 
well, do you go to Iberia.html or do you go to Europe.html? Well, if you imagine them to be like pieces of colored paper stuck down, okay? Whatever is on top in the image map is on top on the hotspots. So wherever there's a clash, wherever there's an overlap, whatever was on top would win out. And actually you can use that to, to your advantage also. Let me just find you an example here that I wanted to show you. Sorry, I didn't think of this sooner. So I have gonna I print out this in my office, I'll bring them to you now, but you can look at the image anyway, you can see from just looking at it that it's five hundred pixels by five hundred pixels. So each of these boxes here is hundred pixels. And you could, for example, code Portugal as a rectangle, really, and you get away with it. I think it's acceptable to, to code Portugal as a rectangle. But even if you didn't, even if you were being very precise and you went all the way around the Portuguese coast and, and the border with Spain, so you made a very nice area that hugged the border of Portugal very well. You don't have to do that again when it comes to Spain. Spain could just go from here to here to here to here and then maybe come all the way down here. Now, this area here, there'll be an overlap between Spain and Portugal. But as long as you put Spain underneath Portugal, it'll be fine. It would really, you'd really see the difference here with, this is Morocco. So if you were to do Morocco going from here to here to here to here to here, and then you went like, mm, 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 and you were very precise with the border of Morocco, you don't need to do the same again for, is this Algeria? I guess it is. You don't need to do the same again for Algeria. You don't have to hug the border perfectly with your area. Algeria could just go from here to here to here to here, which is very imprecise in terms of defining the shape of Algeria. But provided you put that underneath Morocco, you need only do that complicated border the once. So not only should you be aware of what happens when there's an overlap, but knowing that can actually make things much easier to, to code. So I want you to do this, and I also want you to go to, it's been, I'm not connected anymore. Okay, good. So on the notes and slides for this module, it's up here in the soft 6007 slides and examples. I want you to I want you to make an image map for this image here. So I want you to put a page, make a page, put this image on the page, and then put the links. So this here is Los Angeles. This here is San Francisco. This is obviously a circle. You're going to use a circle for this one. The circle is New Orleans. And then if you wake up some morning with a hangover and you can see both the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty, in the same place, you could actually be in Paris, as it happens. So the French made a copy of the Statue of Liberty before they gave it to the Americans as a gift. A smaller one, a souvenir. But, you know, you're probably, depending on the severity of your hangover, you're more likely to be in Las Vegas. Okay? So 
this here is, is Las Vegas and not Paris. No. The border here with the, the shape of Los Angeles is quite awkward. And so you'd need a fairly complicated polygon to specify Los Angeles. Let me just show you here. This is another image I've made that has a grid along the side just so you can see where everything is. You can't see it so well on your screens. On this screen, there's a problem with the color. But the difference between Los Angeles and, Las Ve and San Francisco is quite pronounced in that image. So you can have a look at that. And this area here is a complicated shape. But that doesn't mean that San Francisco along here has to be complicated. Because you can just put San Francisco underneath Los Angeles. So you're going to need a circle for this. And if you've got three polygons, I think that's too many polygons. Most people do this with two polygons, where this is a polygon, this is a polygon, and then San Francisco is just a rectangle that goes from here to here. And it's behind the two. It's under the other two. If you really wanted to push the boat out, though, you could actually do it with just one polygon by making San Francisco a polygon and putting the two rectangles behind it. But it's probably more natural, I think, to use a polygon for Los Angeles, a polygon for Las Vegas, and then have San Francisco be a rectangle behind them. So I think two polygons is OK. Three polygons is too many. And if you want to be a hero, try for the one polygon with San Francisco. So I want you to put this image on a page and have the hotspots work. And I want you to also put this image on a page and have the hotspots work. No. You're not working for the UN when you're doing this. Like, I think it's reasonable to make Portugal a rectangle. You don't have to, you know, go up every nook and cranny of the French coastline. I mean, you can go from here to here to here to here to here to here and here would be perfectly acceptable for France. Now, for this to be usable, for it to be clickable onable, you can't really use a size for Gibraltar without exaggerating its actual size. If Gibraltar was its real size, it would be smaller than one pixel. So you couldn't, you'd probably have a job to click on that one pixel, but I mean, smaller than one pixel is going to be impossible. So Gibraltar would have to be a bit bigger than it really should. So you might decide you want to make Gibraltar a little rectangle around the word Gibraltar, or you might have a circle. Similarly with Andorra. And I mean, Spanish people would probably be upset if you didn't include these parts of Spain. But interestingly, it might be easier, rather than mapping Spain, well, maybe you could have Spain go from here to here and not, you know, not use the water. But also, you can have two areas. You might decide that Spain was very complicated, so you'll do the main, mainland Spain, and then you'll have a, another one for each of these islands. And as long as they go to the right place when you click on them, it doesn't matter that they're a separate area. But it's important to remember that the point of an image map is to create something that someone can click on and go to where they want. So you often see image maps used for navigation on a website. So up at the top of the website, there's a lovely picture, you know, some shiny, happy clip art people, and you click on different things. If you were having a class website, for example, and each of you was going to make a web page, you might decide that on the front door to the website, you'd have a class photo with everyone in it. And then if you click on a person's face, it'll take you to their web page. You do that then with an image map. So any questions on that? I have these printed out, so I'll go back to my office and, and, and get those for you also. It's not in any of the slides. Actually, it's down at the bottom there on you go past the slides and past the files, it's images there at the bottom. Okay. 
Any questions? What is the reason to have the zero, zero top? Up the top? Why is zero, zero up at the top and not down at the bottom left like it is in most mathematical coordinate systems? I don't know, but in almost all computer graphics systems, zero, zero is top left for some reason. Whereas in school, when you were doing graphs and things, it was bottom left for zero, zero. But in most systems I've seen, the coordinate geometry starts up here, just the way it is. OK, any other questions? Now, there's a sample exam there as well, if you want to go have a, have a go at that too. Bear in mind, though, that there's a question there on lists, a question there on tables, but you could equally get a question on image maps. So like, don't do the sample exam now and ignore the image maps. You want to do those too. Any other questions? Okay.